Hello DevOps people, how is everyone doing? Welcome to Full Stack Live, my live coding stream where I'm doing all kinds of DevOpsy stuff. Um, mostly working on my open source project that I've created, especially for this um, live stream. Um, the project is called Jupyter and it's a server infrastructure management application going to be one at least and um, I'm going to continue today where I left off on Tuesday which is uh, accessing the uh, API of uh, the server hosting provider uh, Hetzner but uh, before I do that I'd like to um, uh, do a little side project it's going to be very little um, and um, it's something that I'd like to um, deploy today because I simply need it. Um, what I'm going to do is I am um, um, switching the websites from uh, for our company runbook and the uh, previous domain needs to be redirected to the new domain. Um, there are a few redirection services out there, but why um, use something external if we already have infrastructure in place that can easily uh, solve this problem. So what I'm going to do is use a little um, uh, Docker image that already exists that is able to redirect a domain to a different target. Before I'm going to start on this. Um, as always, uh, I love if you use the chat because uh, I'd like this to be a two-way communication instead of me talking to my screen here and getting no response back. So uh, please pop into the chat if there is anything you'd like to know, if there is anything I should explain better uh, if you have any questions about the things I do um, or if you just want to say hi and uh, tell me something about yourself. Um, I highly appreciate it. Okay, so um, now without further ado, let's go to the redirection thing and deploy that to our Kubernetes cluster. Um, I've already created a deployment manifest that will use the Docker web redirect image and uh, I've added a bit of configuration to it in form of uh, environment variables. So what I want to do is redirect the domain runbook.freistil.it to um, the new place where our run book is going to be located with which is in uh, the um, which is in, in notion and it's a kind of a wiki as a service and um, we've been using that for a, f uh, a while now and we are very happy with it and um, just this morning I uh, migrated our content over and uh, now everyone who goes to runbook.freisty.it is supposed to land on our Notion runbook page here. At least um, when I uh, change the DNS for this host name to our Kubernetes cluster. Um, so uh, I'm pretty sure this can work. So what this does is it creates a deployment in Kubernetes um, under the name redirect runbook. I only need one replica. I don't need much redundancy for this service. If it goes down, it can be restarted anywhere else in the cluster. And um, so there are not, uh, no, um, there's no demand on high availability here. Um, and uh, the container is going to be called redirect. It's using this um, Docker image. It'll run on port 80, of course, and um, it'll do its thing. So let me deploy this to our cluster. 
I'm going to um, use cube control, cube cuttle, um, and I'll apply the deployment to the F7 IT namespace. Good. At least I seem to not have made any syntactical errors. Let me see how it works. Um, redirect runbook. Nope. Of course not. Yep. It's up and running. Easier than I was hoping. Nice. It's got the necessary environment variables. Okay, so now what we need to do is um, expose this service to the uh, public and that's done by an ingress controller um, the ingress controller in many K kubernetes clusters the ingress controller is the only service that can actually be reached from the outside everything else is running behind private ip addresses that's the case with our kubernetes cluster as well um, it runs on a private VLAN and uh, uses um, uh, non-public IP addresses in the 10.x range. So um, my deployment might be running, but I can't reach it. And uh, the ingress here solves this problem because uh, I tell the ingress controller, um, please set up a uh, virtual host for runbook.fristeel.it. Um, take everything that's coming in from the root path down and uh, pass it on to the service called redirect runbook and to its port 80. So um, if I apply this, um, let's see, apply ingress. Kubernetes will take my, this, this new information and reconfigure our ingress controller so this service can be reached from the outside. This seems to have worked as well, but let me see how things are looking. Of course. Here we go. Yep, it's set up. And it's bound to port 80, so that seems to be working as well. And um, even though I haven't yet switched our DNS entries to our Kubernetes cluster, I can um, use curl to um, access it. And uh, let me just look up the syntax that I can't seem to remember. It's the resolve option of curl that allows me to say, okay, if I tell you to connect to um, runbook.frystillit, I want you to instead um, uh, 
use another address. The provided address... host name as well I think it can otherwise I'll just switch it to the um, host uh, to the IP address so what I'm going to do is um, I'd like to go to run book dot dot it um, and it's okay if I only see the headers if I go there yet yeah, now um, I'll get redirected to the um, SSL version, and uh, if I access that one, um, I get some um, content back because I'm talking to the current website. What I'd like to do is instead resolve um, the name runbook.fryzy.it to another. address, namely coop.f7it.net. Resolve this address here and use the IP address instead. And since I'm ac accessing port 80, I need to contact HTTP. Here we go. Unfortunately, something seems to be broken because I get a service temporarily unavailable. A 503 error. Let's see. Does the inverse do logs? No, it doesn't. Logs only works with pods. to access the pods directly. Okay. So, um, let's see. I'll uh, I'll describe my deployment.
Oh, I just used the, the label as a selector, of course. Mm -hmm. There's something fishy between the ingress and the deployment. So let me see the deployment. did not actually create a service that I can reference. Oh, of course it did not. I haven't deployed one. Uh, I should be able to integrate the service with the deployment. service called redirect run book and that's the service the ingress has been waiting for all the time I guess so let's take a look how curl works and it works I get my redirect back and it's redirecting so all I have to do now is to switch DNS to our Kubernetes cluster and we're done that's nice okay So let's add a service as well. Um, I 
simply copy the service. Okay, now let's switch topics here and go back to Jupiter. So where I left off on Tuesday was that I had had um, built a few classes to access the hosting provider API at Hetzner and um, I had built a few tests that uh, access the API after uh, stubbing the API uh, response and um, seeing if I get an actual list of servers back, and I did. So that's how the uh, API looks for now. It's pretty short because I'm using the Hetzner API gem here, um, and I've simply wrapped everything in classes and methods. I'm not using the Hetzner colon colon API class directly in my business logic. Instead, I've wrapped it into the server, Hetzner server API request class. And um, instead of returning the raw JSON hash that uh, it gives back, um, I'm converting everything into Hetzner server API server objects that allow me to access everything via methods or attributes. Let's run a test if things are still working. I've done a few style changes before I start the stream, so let's make sure I didn't break anything. Uh, exec break test. And uh, I hope the, the tests will be successful, and then I'll go ahead and uh, start working on the actual data import into the application itself. Oh. 
this is just Rake. Come on, let's take this out. Guess it's loading on a bit of a whole radiance application for the first time. Here we go. There are problems with uh, active job and active storage. So, okay, I didn't even get to run my. Oh, uh, the, no, no, the test suit actually did run. Guess. Uh, And the other one was active storage, which I don't use, but anyway. something here. Oh yeah, I need to build the app again with the app container image again. I could have simply run from the install inside the container. Building it again, it does make sense. We can still run by the install inside the container anyway. Do you see if so?
it was what I expected. It's because I did not work because uh, I'm referencing gems that aren't explicitly named here. Instead, I might have to do. Well, let's look it up. I don't want to do a bundle update rails. Or do I have to? Hmm. Rails five two. Five two one. K 
can't update it. So I have to update reins, I guess. Which is also pinned to 520, I guess. No, it's not. Okay, there's something I'm, I need to be overlooking. If you know what I'm missing, please let me know in the chat, because uh, I'm a bit flummoxed at the moment. job is five two one
So if I update action later, or I could simply upgrade rails. Yeah, I should upgrade rails to 522. And the version constraint should allow that. Okay, one more reason to run the tests. Every time I have to update gems in a, in a big application, like a Rails application, it goes that way. I'm not doing it often enough to uh, make it a routine, and I always struggle with all these dependencies. this didn't break anything and instead resolve the security warnings. Looks like it does. Okay, now um, let's try and get back into a bit of logic. I have the uh, API request class and uh, API server class, and uh, they return data. And I actually, uh, before I started the stream, I, I uh, tried it with um, my production credentials, and I actually get the full server list we have running at uh, Hetzner back, so it's actually working. Now um, I need to write the import, um, the actual import into the application database. Rubocop is still trying to get everything tested, don't know why, why it's taking that long, but let's keep it working. Um, now. To think about how to build this import. In the long run, I'd like to have this uh, trigger a job that does the import asynchronously, but uh, I still need to have some kind of logic that does the import. So I guess we'll need a new service object that can import things. And I call it Hetzner Server Importer. of stuff that Rubocop is complaining about. Ah, it's the auto-generated stuff. So let's uh, try and... Um... Oh, I'll, I'll fix these later. What is important to me is that the actual test suite runs successfully. Okay, so uh, I'll have to have a perform or execute method that does the import. And this uh, 
perform method will certainly use the server heads to, the heads to server API class and its servers method. So let's start with that. So I guess I can create a heads to server. Class. Okay, that works fine. Server request new. It doesn't have any. Oh, we can actually call it directly as a class method. No, it just doesn't have an, an, uh, a constructor. Okay, and so I can call this server list API servers. servers and these servers should be in the database so let's call this heads server quarter spec I'll create a new class um, importer. Let's nurse an importer new. Importer form. And um, It only has started doing that recently. I'm not sure why. So I should expect a few more that's no servers in my database. And there is a way to write this using our spec. some kind of changed
expect Run the test and see it fail because it doesn't do anything yet. I hope that it's at least some tactically valid so it can run. It simply doesn't um, have the desired results. Yeah. Let's connect it's not allowed. Okay, yeah, it, now it does a actual API request and it's not allowed to do that. So I'll have to stop the API request. I can do it the same way I've done it here. And then I'll probably have to um, somehow refract this. basically test my test. That doesn't make any sense. Mm. I guess I'll still start with mocking the basic uh, API. <clears throat> At least I didn't get any warnings, so it seems to be local. Um, okay, um, it did not change the count. The count is still zero. Of course it is. Uh, but uh, I can now go through the server list. And... See if I already have the server with this uh, server number, I guess. If
but I should probably update it. Otherwise, I'll simply create a new one. all the attributes from the internal API representation. I was skeptical um, about using the annotate gem because it changes uh, so many files if you change the database schema, but um, having this information handy without going into schema.rb and uh, trying to look that up is really handy. So I have a number, name, and the IP address. Okay, and not much more. Product status and data center. Okay. Um, so it makes sense to translate that here. I could, for example, go ahead and simply create the servers um, and its number, server, server number, and uh, name, server, probably name, and IP4. So I don't get these warnings here. Good. So okay. Let's see if the test runs. server doesn't have a name attribute because it's called server name not sure why I ah oh, that's the names used by the API okay otherwise I wouldn't like this duplication did work. So let's make sure we catch all the uh, information we can get. Um, so, so far I have the uh, number name, the IP address, 
Let's catch the product, the status, and the data center. Product, server, product, status, server, status, and data center, server, data center. Again, not a field in here, it's called DC. And it still works good. Since we are looking servers up by their number, I should make sure that there is an index on the numbers column, which there is not. Okay, let's make sure there is one. Active record migration index. Simply add index. Okay, let's uh, do a Let's generate migration at numbers index to add server.
Okay. And um, let's run all the tests again. And if this works, I'll try and actually up the uh, import our server list from the Rails console. So then test the, uh, the case where we don't have any new servers, but there are already servers imported, and it needs to update them. Not yet in the database. And if we already have servers in here, should update them. It updates servers. Stored. Servers not yet stored. Service already stored. And in that case, I guess we'll try not to change the count. But it uh, requires that we already import something or create something. So what I do is. still breaks things here. I'll do this off stream. Create um, test servers. server with uh, number three two one name server one I'll just take the attributes from above here but I leave a few things out so I guess that should suffice Can do the same for server two. Number in this case is four two one, and it's server two.
Okay, so far it works. It does not change the count anymore, but... Um, I'll have to check that. So I've got one. For example, IPv4 to equal this should break. Hey, quick draw, how are you doing? How have you been? Oh, I, I'm fine. Um, back online with my stream after a few weeks of a break. Um, and I'm pretty happy with my new project here because um, it really, yep, brilliant. Um, it uh, really helps me um, do some coherent stuff. Last time you saw me, I was heading out for a holiday to some island. Yeah, I was uh, just about to go on uh, summer vacations with my family. And uh, we actually did go, but uh, when I returned, uh, things just uh, got so turbulent that uh, I didn't get to do the stream for three months, I think. I've just returned recently uh, doing regular live streams. And... Um, I've created a new website, which you can get with the website command. And uh, on there you'll find a blog post, and uh, uh, in this post I describe what I've changed for the live stream and things like that. So I have a, a, a special live streaming project here now um, that I'm building from scratch. and. Uh, yeah, to 99% I'll do things on stream, except if they are really boring, like uh, resolving style issues. So um, the stream should be more valuable now. Okay, so update doesn't seem to be quite working, and uh, let's fix this. Uh, let's call it server record server record update and then we'll use the same things here You always found my stream valuable. Thank you for that. that I, I really appreciate it. I hope it's not uh, even better now. Oh, you, you're uh, doing view now. Uh, that's something I'll have to get into eventually. I don't speak JavaScript at all. And uh, more and more I find that uh, uh, a thing that I need to fix um, because JavaScript getting more and more popularity not only in, in web front end stuff but also uh, in uh, automation and uh, so um, I'll definitely get to get me some uh, I got to get me some JavaScript and maybe even uh, some kind of framework like uh, Vue or maybe uh, something similar but up until now, I'm still busy doing Ruby here. Um, okay, that should do the trick, I'd say.
pretty sure that um, Rubocop will um, moan about this here, but uh, I can get it prettier off screen. It's just cosmetics. Wow! Fixed it. Nice. Okay, so as promised, let's get it to work here. Um, I think you could recommend View and Beautify. There's a tool, of course, there's a tool named Beautify. You are way more experienced than you so getting it, it won't take long at all, and you get a lot of JavaScript for free. Yeah, I'd, uh, I, I agree. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're right. And uh, of course, um, acquiring a new, a new language um, is easier if you are experienced in, in uh, programming. And uh, I've learned more than 13 programming languages. Uh, over my career, and uh, JavaScript will only be number fifteen or so. And uh, but uh, yeah, it's I, I find it pretty useful, or it seems to be pretty useful, and uh, I should definitely make time for that. Okay, so how does this work? I create a new Hetzner Server importer. And let's just look at our spec, what it does, because oh, I uh, I'm getting really tired now after a long work day. Um, so I'm. I'll create a new Pesos server importer and I'll tell it to perform. Now that's easy. So it just to Hetzner server importer new dot perform. Oh, let's do something interesting before Hetzner server dot count zero. Hetzner server importer dot new dot perform. Don't break on me. Okay, lots of SQL. Oof. And does a page break. Because it's quite a lot of servers we have been accumulating over time. Is there some way to... What happens if I do Q? Okay. Oh, I didn't break anything. Now we have 76 entries. Programming in the end all comes down to logic. Yeah, that's the case. Uh, although, of course, there are different um, kinds of logic. Um, so far, uh, I'm doing object-oriented programming, and I'll probably stay uh, with that. But uh, if you change to, say, for example, functional programming with things like Elixir or uh, Haskell, uh, I guess the world is a little bit different over there. Um, I'd be interested on an, for intellectual reasons to, to learn these things, but I don't have any practical use for them, because I guess uh, Ruby will serve me just fine for my daily business. You're currently making a website preview thingy, so you can drag and drop components and then we brand it so you can preview what a page will look like using different pre-made components. Nice! Pretty cool stuff to be working with, I, uh, I agree. Uh, these page builders and stuff uh, are always uh, interesting. Okay, let's see. Heads neural server first. Look at that. Yes, that's one of our oldest servers here. Nice. Which means I should also be able to view this on the web application itself. You have an issue though, uh, maybe you could borrow my, t my mind for a few seconds? Yeah, of course, um, I've just more or less finished this. Uh, I haven't um, wired it into the application, but uh, adding a button that uh, triggers a job that then does this importer stuff that I just did manually shouldn't be a big issue. I, I'll, I'll do that uh, next week. 
So, um, yeah, go ahead and try and explain things to me, and I, I, I'll try and give you an answer that helps you. Uh, local host. Sign in. These are all empty, but if I do a heads nor servers, I get a long list of servers. Nice. Guess I'm happy with that result. And while you explain your issue, I'll commit my changes. Guess I'll leave the gem file.lock for a different branch. Hey, Zidora, how are you doing? What do you use for pushing code into production? You mean a deployment? Um, I haven't built the deployment for this uh, application yet. That's something I'm going to do soon as well, because now that we can get production information into the application, we should start using it in production. And um, uh, so uh, we are running our own Kubernetes cluster. Um, and uh, I'll deploy this application to Kubernetes, so there will be a database and uh, the application itself. And uh, I'll live stream how I built the deployment, and I'm doing that. Um, what I'm going to do is um, I'll add Travis CI to the mix, so the application uh, gets tested in uh, on Travis. And if tests are running fine, then I'll deploy it to our Kubernetes cluster. Okay, let's go ahead and add everything in app spec and db. Everything except the gem file .lock. Uh, yeah, yes, uh, we are uh, paying for the service. We, uh, we have the basic plan that allows us to run one test in parallel because uh, we don't run tests that often. And uh, it served us very well so far. We can run tests for our chef cookbooks, we can run tests for our uh, applications here, and uh, Integrating uh, Travis with uh, Kubernetes is a blog post or a screencast I'm going to do soon. Okay, let's write a commit message and I guess it's a Hetzner server importer service object. Okay, quick draw. Um, you're using something called view draggable, which lets you drag and drop items, which you render from an array. Okay, so far so good. But when you add a class to one of the items and then move it, say we have uh, item one, two, three, item two gets a class, you mean a CSS class, and then you move item two up, so the order is two, one, three, okay. In, in some kind of a 
list, I guess, then item 2 loses the class and item 1 inherits it. Yeah, that's... you're right, that's probably hard for me to answer. Not only because I'm not familiar with, with uh, view at all, uh, also because I uh, am very poor at front-end development. And... Um, The only thing I can try and think through how you're manipulating the, the DOM and how that could result in the thing, in this behavior. Hmm. Yeah, you're right. It looks like the class is bound to the index and not to the actual element. So if you move the element, the, the class stays in place and then uh, applies to the new element at that location. But that's not how the doc document object model works, does it? Is it? Um, that's certainly something you should look into. Um, might be something uh, View is doing here. Um, you really should take a look at how View actually is modifying the DOM. Um, because uh, as far as I know, uh, it shouldn't be the case that uh, the class is bound to the index. That doesn't make any sense. But um, I guess that depends on how you um, does the dragging and, and things like that. Maybe the in uh, items inside the draggable are rendered by index. Yeah, that could be the case. So if you find a way to prevent the index from being updated, I guess the entire thing will stop working. Hmm. It definitely is weird, yeah, um, but uh, I'm afraid I can't help you there because uh, it might be something specific to view how how, did, how it renders this draggable and uh, how it how the internal data structures look like. However, you're probably not the first who does that sort of thing, and uh, so you might not be the first who runs into this problem. Uh, and uh, with a few of these keywords you might get a, a solid solution for this, if you look at draggable and index and class, for example. Have you tried um, finding something on Stack Overflow or something? So that's that. I will go ahead and get the master branch. Okay, so let's beat the stash. Okay. I've been Googling for an hour, but can't really find anything related. Hmm. Strange. Sorry. I'm at a loss here. I'll rebase this on master. Do I rebase it? No, I don't know. Let's simply merge it, git merge master. Oh, 
should be fine. And all I have to do is resolve the Rubocop stuff. But uh, as I've learned on this stream recently, Rubocop A will help me resolve this quite quickly with the auto repair feature. But um, since that's very repetitive, I will do that off screen. So far, I'm happy that I now have a list of servers in my database and uh, so uh, the application gets a bit more practical now. Um, I'll probably also get rid of the abstract classes I've built before. Um, I explained this in my previous session on, on Tuesday. Um, by trying to model some kind of abstract server resource data schema, um, I decided on things far too early and uh, making these decisions uh, early is a mistake in most of the cases. So I'll get rid of this and simply leave the Hetzner server class that does what it is supposed to do and I'll get rid of these abstract classes, resource and resource types and stuff. Um, at some point in the future, I'll uh, be able to make the Hetzner server class more abstract by basically introducing a base class and deriving from that and things like that. But um, let's do that when our code is uh, ready for that. And so I'll get rid of these resource stuff. Um, I, you know what? I'll, I'll simply add an issue here. We'll call this. Is it a bug? No, it's not a bug. It doesn't keep things from working, but it'll be an enhancement. Uh, introducing abstract models so early was a mistake. Uh, let's refactor or let's uh, do that when it actually makes sense from a clean code perspective. So that leaves a task for the next stream. Slayer Darth, welcome. As always, you're being a bit late to the party. Uh, but uh, at least I get to say hello to you. Good. Um, the import server, heads of servers issue is almost finished. And uh, I guess uh, I'll add the import button and the job that then will do the import asynchronously. Uh, we'll do that next week on Tuesday at the same time as always 3.30 p.m. GMT. Um, is there anything else? Clean up? Nope. It's all good. I think I have pushed everything so you can go on GitHub and take a look at what I've built. Yeah, I think it's time to wrap up for today. As always, thanks for... Yeah, of course! No, no problem. Um, uh, yeah, as always, uh, if you don't yet follow the stream, please do so. Uh, uh, you'll help my stream to get more... Uh, uh, to reach more people and uh, help people uh, with uh, DevOps stuff. And um, of course, uh, it'll also stroke my ego a bit. So thank you in advance. Um, 
And uh, I guess that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Take care.